As if the first ever indictment of a former president wasn't enough to digest this week, Tennessee pushed the political world into a further tailspin. The GOP dominated House voting to expel two young Democratic lawmakers because they had taken part in a gun control protest. It didn't escape a notice that representatives Justin Jones and Justin Pearson are black, while their white colleague Gloria Johnson also protested, but she survived being kicked out by one vote. And joining us now to talk about this is Republican strategist, CNN political analyst Alice Stewart, and CNN political commentator Bakari Sellers, a former South Carolina state legislator. Bakari, I have to start with you first because I got to wonder uh, what, what would have been like for you to be in the thick of this. How did we get here? That's a good question. I mean, and, and how would I have felt to be in the thick of this? I don't think yeah. that at the period of time I was elected from 2006 to 2014, uh, the temperature was what it is today. Um, the fact is, I think Republicans in the Tennessee General Assembly just shot themselves in the foot. Um, they didn't want these young black men or they probably looked at them as these young colored boys to be able to speak up and use their use their words and use their courage and do the things that they felt should be done. Um, but yet and still, they made them martyrs. Uh, they put them on a pedestal. Now everybody knows Justin and Justin. And the fact they did it without any regard to their white colleague, Gloria, who's actually an ally, who is a hero herself, it just shows you what this was about. This was about putting two young Negroes in their place. And I think it backfired, similar to 1966 and Julian Bond. And Alice, uh, that state legislator that uh, Bakari just mentioned, Gloria Johnson, she said, yes, because of the color of my skin, that she was spared and the other two lawmakers were not uh, when it comes to expulsion. Let me ask you, Alice, the, the Republican uh, Party in Tennessee, they hold a supermajority uh, in the General Assembly there. Uh, is this what you wanted to see this week from uh, state lawmakers there uh, in Tennessee? Was this a mistake? Did they go too far? What do you think? Uh, it is not what I wanted to see. Yes, they made a mistake, and yes, they went too far. I, I think this absolutely could have been handled by just uh, censuring these uh, legislators and potentially maybe removing them from, from their committee assignments, and they certainly would have uh, gotten the message. And, and I've spoken with one of the um, representatives that made this uh, decision, and they said it was very difficult. It was a very emotional day. But when they looked at the footage and uh, talked with people that were there on the day of these protests, they saw the, the two Justins um, acting a little bit more aggressively than uh, the woman who was not uh, expelled from the, the legislature. They saw them going up into the balcony and uh, inciting uh, the crowd and, and really uh, furthering the uh, intensity of these protests. And look, I give all three of them great courage for standing up for what they believe in and standing up for what they uh, want to see in terms of enacting legislation. But many people know, and, and Bakari knows this, uh, having been in the legislature, in order to affect change and have meaningful legislative outcomes, you need to have uh, common ground, you need to have com communication, you need to have civil discourse on these issues. And in order to uh, change legislation, you have to change hearts and minds and make meaningful legislation. And I truly believe if these three had um, tried to have meaningful conversations with all of the legislature about meaningful ways to reform gun violence, that could have uh, been helpful and, and certainly would have made progress. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this uh, is still the first of what I see many, many more conversations from the three of these people. And Bakari, what do you see in terms of this being an assault on democracy uh, at the state level in Tennessee? D did you view it that way? I know a lot of folks in the Democratic Party, they see sort of a rollback of, uh, I guess, democratic uh, procedures taking place in state houses across the country. Is that what you saw? Did you see some of that at play in, in Tennessee as well? I did, Jim. And, and you know, people always want to say, I mean, as soon as we get off this uh, off this uh, segment, people are going to say, Wakari, well, why are you playing the race card on social media? It's going to go crazy. Well, you have to understand the dynamics of where we are in the South. You have to understand the dynamics of these these young uh, black men attempting to speak their truth to power. Um, you have to understand the dynamics of what's at play in Nashville, where you have these kind of democratic epicenters of economic um, empowerment in Memphis, where these men represent. And so when you when you put all of these things together and you see the fact that the first thing they wanted to do was shut them up. 
The first thing they wanted to do was tell them that, boy, you can't speak no more. Then you realize where we truly are. I mean, you think about Josh Hawley. I mean, people want to talk about decorum. You think about Josh Hawley, Hawley raising his fist of power as he walks by insurrectionists. And Josh Hawley today is still a United States senator from uh, the great state of Missouri. Like, people never thought about removing him from office. But we had young people gunned down in a school. Let's put all of this in the context. We had young people, babies, gunned down in a school. And these young people, these young black boys, men, excuse me, decided they were going to um, speak their truth to power about not having any more young babies gunned down, and yet they eject them from their seats. And so there's something else at play here. And I think what's at play is race. I think power dynamics are at play. And I think the erosion of democracy, as you said, Jim, is at play. And until we truly deal with these things, Donald Trump showed us that you can use racism as political currency, you can attempt to chip away at a road democracy, and then you can talk to people however you want to talk to them and still be politically successful in this country. That's the danger, and that's why we understand democracy is fragile. And Alice, uh, Bakari Jim, brings up I, a I good point. Say, if, sure, if, go ahead. Go ahead. No, if I could just say, uh, having worked in the state house right across the border from Tennessee uh, in Little Rock, uh, in the governor's office, and, and seeing Little how Rock. legislative uh, proceedings are carried out, um, there are rules. There are there's procedural decorum that ne is necessary in order to make meaningful change to represent people all across the state. And the those that I have spoken with say, when you violate those norms. There needs to be consequences, and we need to have order in order to make change in, in these states. And, and again, I can't say I, I commend these three for standing up for what they want to do, but the, the best way to have meaningful change and get back to the real topic at hand is these six innocent lives that were killed in this school shooting. How do we prevent this from happening? Let's hear from the Tennessee Three. Let's talk about red flag laws. Let's talk about hardening targets. Let's talk about school yeah. resource officers. Let's about mental health. All of these ideas from legislators across the state of Tennessee and the country are important to have meaningful gun violence change. But Alice, I mean, didn't Marjorie Taylor Greene uh, violate some decorum during the State of the Union speech for President Biden when she was shouting liar at him? I mean, she's done this a couple of State of the Unions in a row. And, you know, she wasn't kicked out. Now, look, Marjorie Taylor Greene is uh, a on her own island. And she has been kicked off committee assignments in the past. And look, I think there's a completely, there's a slightly different scenario when she um, inappropriately and disrespectfully screams out at the president of the United States. I think that is absolutely and completely wrong. But this is a different situation in, in my view when you have legislators that have disrupted the legislative process for, for nearly an hour and were given the opportunity to say, all right, let's have conversations, and we won't do that in the future. Uh, when that didn't happen, that's why these legislators in Tennessee made the decision they had. All right. Any last word from you, Bakari? Yeah, I mean, I think that, I mean, with respect to Alice and everyone else, we saw John Lewis, the great John Lewis, take a seat on the, state, on the, on the floor of the United States Congress. We see these acts of civil disobedience happen all the time. It's civil disobedience. They broke no laws. They committed no crimes. They violated decorum in a general assembly, committed acts of civil disobedience. And yet you have lawmakers who actually violate real crimes, commit DUIs, who beat their wives, et cetera, et cetera. And they still get a chance to sit. So let's actually add context to this and understand what they did in Tennessee was about race, was about power, and was about eroding democracy. Shame on Tennessee.